Okay, here's AI first engineering, and we're looking at health and medicine. And in this lesson, we're looking at various ways that uh, AI and possibly more generally high tech is tackling the coronavirus. In an earlier lesson, we heard how coronavirus was making waste of our, of our lives, but now we're looking at uh, moving forward and trying to address the problem. So here is an interesting snippet I found about a robot, um, which I think is uh, an interesting harbinger, because it again comes back to uh, telehealth draining in importance. So here the robot is basically measuring patients breathing with a stethoscope and sharing results with clinicians. So this is a classic telemedicine application. Um, we didn't have robots, but when we I was working in 1994 in this area, this is the type of thing we were studying. And um, say so it didn't take off then, it's going to clearly have value at the moment. How much of it stays in the future, we'll have to see. But I think it's quite likely, because it's pretty solid technology. And now with drones and so much better networking and AI, what failed in 1994 could certainly work now. All right, here is a straightforward but important application. We already stressed that imaging is the most uh, advanced of the AI applications because you can take ex explicitly take existing solutions and modify them to existing image processing solutions, say developed for the car industry or surveillance industry or face recognition and so on and uh, <coughs> adapt it to, uh, instead of uh, recognizing panda bears, to recognize uh, the virus. And so this is uh, not surprising, this company was able to do this. It's still important, even if it's not surprising. And um, notice this data, there's not that much data, 157. So uh, even the people at the leading edge are not finding it that easy to get huge samples of data. There ought to be a lot more. That's a weakness of this world we live in. We somehow don't share critical data. Um, and I gather it's actually being used across the world, China, Italy, Russia. Um, and there is a uh, another comment here about a different uh, system from China. In general, this is bound to work. I'm not saying this is the perfect solution, but we are so good at deep learning for imaging, uh, and uh, we ought to always be able to do at least as well as humans, possibly better. All right, here is another general type we'll come back to later on, the chatbot world. Um, so Siri is basically able to interact with users and give them guidance as to what situation they're in. That's just called triaging, to see who should go to the emergency room, who should just keep calm, and so on. And uh, of course, Siri has to be taught to do this. And so you train, this is sort of an expert system like application. You have a set of, you ask questions, you listen to answers, and with each answer you have a response. As well as that, um, you know the I know well the High Performance Computing Consortium, which is a collection of computers to put to, to bring to bear on studying this problem. Uh, <coughs> and, of and here it mentions that Siri is going to reach, of course, 100 million iPhone users. That's actually quite interesting. Yeah, that, that's a lot of iPhones. Um, okay. Because as in the notes here, that uh, presumably Siri is not going to propagate fake news. Hopefully, it propagates real news. Because it's otherwise, people are going. You can quite easily get misled if you just read the web. Uh, here is a seemingly a rather low-key, lower-end uh, tool, to, which is with an important goal, which is uh, obviously the healthcare. Uh, Community workers are really suffering in this thing because they're working their heart out, and it's, it's sort of a danger, very dangerous job. And so this is a tool which is um, from a startup, which basically monitors healthcare workers and uh, tries to pre-identify uh, 
the the virus uh, infection. And this is one of many such tools, but as it's stressed here, this one is aimed at healthcare workers. Because John Hopkins has a wonderful medical school, and so they're well prepared to uh, um, to, to uh, develop this. And we all know that the PPE is a new term we've come to learn, and uh, there isn't so much of it, and so we have to we have to make certain people, all these people without enough PPE, uh, are given as much warning and care as possible. All right, so here is a news item that Amazon Care, which is uh, exploits Amazon's wonderful uh, delivery capabilities is working with a Seattle research activity, which is trying to understand the virus. And it's uh, picking up and delivering corona test kits. And this particular activity is supported by Gates. And we all know that um, we have a shortage of testing in the US. And this particular place is actually where one of the earliest um, outbreaks Happened King County, although it recently has not been as fortunately for them, has not been as uh, uh, as serious as uh, say New York City and other places in the country. Um, here is a uh, another chatbot example we heard about Siri. Here we're using uh, Microsoft's uh, healthcare bot, and it's um, an online chatbot which is system checking. That seems to me exactly like the case we heard about Siri earlier on. And um, <coughs> we noticed already that we expect chatbot software to be in, which is all effectively AI based. The chatbot is not AI. I mean, the, the way the chatbot responds is all governed by AI. Um, and triaging is just tell, telling you how to prioritize and decide what to do. So this is CDC, the Central Government Organization Disease Control. All right, so here is a more um, general comment on chatbots, which um, uh, well, we, uh, in the previous, some uh, much earlier um, lectures, we noted that chatbots in uh, actually in the retail area were very expected to be very important, and they was sort of increasing in use. And this is a, this is, these are one of the technologies or approaches that will be enhanced by the virus. And um, there, there here we have um, jumps in use by, by uh, various industries, such as the airline industry, which must get lots of terrible calls about people wanting to know what to do, and the hotel industry. And so we expect chatbots to get this increase in chatbot use probably to continue, although I'm not such a fan of chatbots myself. But um, they're probably, they, they, they must, if you have good enough AI, they can certainly even outperform the vast majority of humans. And you can't afford to put real experts at the other end of a phone call or the other end of a, a chat, an actual chat window on the web. So I, I think my negativity is not appropriate. This is a pretty important area, which if done well, will have huge impact. Uh, okay, so here we have um, diagnostic solutions being brought to the market by Amazon. And I assume this is just a providing cloud computing time to develop diagnostics. And clouds are very suitable for this type of problem. Because you're not running giant programs, you're running lots and lots of little programs as you run your software on individuals. So this is perfectly suited for clouds, not the right thing to run on supercomputers or university systems. And um, here is a much more academic example of big tech working with, um, in this case, a company, Adaptive Biotechnology, which is um, basically studying the immune system, because we know the virus, coronavirus, actually its problem is it tweaks the immune, it stimulates the immune system, and the immune system responds with such vigor that it actually destroys things it shouldn't destroy. 
this is a well-known problem, which I mentioned. I had this that particular one particular disease of this type, the Guillain-Barré syndrome, many many years ago, and um, so it's a so, but that, and there's going to be a lot of work of this type. This is work in fundamental biology or computational biology, and which is going to try to understand how the human body responds to this virus and related viruses. Because this is obviously going to tell you what type of vaccine to develop. To develop. And in fact, at the moment, they're looking at that, you know, they're trying to identify drugs. If you understood the interaction of the virus with the immune system better, you'd have a much, you'd be able to narrow down your drugs. So this is coupled with the things we'll actually mention later on, which just explore the space of possible drugs. And then that space of possible drugs, you design your drug, which you specify in terms of its chemical compounds, and then you see how it interacts with the virus or with the immune system. We've actually seen this plot before, so I won't go through it again. It tells you more broadly what Big Tech is doing in healthcare. We already noticed that data security is present for all of them. And they have different strengths, which are actually are the same as in the last plot. So I won't go through it. This is it's a useful plot. They're all very fragmented. Um, that's maybe not so bad, because this field needs a fragmented approach, because there is no one solution. You need AI to really spread pervasively, and that will only do it work if you do it in a, in a um, rather scattershot fashion. You just have to be systematic in your support of this area. So here we have uh, three uh, news about three particular uh, companies. Here we have a clinical trial for a possible virus, a vaccine, sorry. And um, this, this actually, I gather, used Amazon Clouds, and it took 40 days. Exactly, I don't actually know what the, um, I mean, it would be, it's sort of clear what they could be doing. They could have, they must have a set of drug, candidate drugs that they were work, working on. And then they just run on the cloud programs to check how these candidates um, interact with the virus, because you can make a model for the virus. And then they choose the best of those candidates. Um, then um, we'll, um, here is a sort of collaboration, but uh, so this is again a company that has a vaccine very early. And then presumably it must be pretty similar type of thing to what I suggested Moderna was doing. Here we have another one in June. Okay, so I think we don't know whether this will succeed at all. Because there are other people who say it will take 12 to 18 months to have a vaccine. Well, I sure hope it's over in 12 to 18 months. Well, here we have a, just a rather obscure, maybe slightly the funny announcement about this insure, health insurance startup developing a website. Well, that's obviously useful. It's, uh, it's interesting. It's run by uh, one of the one of the relatives or some of the connections to the Trump family. And um, actually, I'm surprised. It's actually working with the Affordable Care Act, which is not the favorite act within the Trump administration. Um, so in general, anything like this, which is enhancing the web interface that people can interact with, has to be a good idea. So independent of the, the, the nature of this company, and what it's doing seems to be important. And now here we have a slightly different section on remote work technology. Where um, we'll cut here we have at the bottom zoom, which we all know. Um, actually, since this was written, we have a big security panic. I actually have not seen any security problems, but they, they people that they've got really in, are not attacked. I don't know whether it's just actually a real attack or just a, or maybe just people like to make trouble, or whether it is a serious problem. Obviously, Zoom has lots of video streams and audio streams and. Linked uh, across the world, 
you can be more or less secure about whether those uh, interactions can be hacked or not. And uh, it is probable that when they were acquired, sleepy company, nobody paid any attention, and now the hackers around the world have found a very visible thing to attack. Um, <clears throat> So here is a round, which seems to be a variant of Zoom with a somewhat different user interface. Where people occur in circular icons, you know. You often get circular icons on web pages, and uh, those people float around the screen. Well, I'm, maybe that's a good idea. Here we have an online meeting company. Um, and it has... Um, 18,000 people waiting to use that technology. And so it's trying to replicate an offline event. This, I think, is a good idea. Because although it's relatively obvious how you do it with, say, Zoom and, and Slack and things like that, that's different from doing it. And there are lots of, because um, you have to have a website attached to the, the, to the meeting and there are all sorts of, uh, it's sort of non-trivial to put together a meeting. And uh, I suspect there is a good business to be made by supporting the, the, the range of functions needed with online meetings. Well, Run the World, that's got a nice name. Um, it has a similar um, goal. And it's um, running online lectures, conferences, and Festivals, that's what we like to see. Interestingly, free conference call, you would have thought, I might have even thought that company had disappeared. It is the, one of the dominant uh, telephone conferencing systems. And um, it has soared in use, which is sort of interesting, because in my world, we, don't, we have a few telephone conversations, but not so many. Slack is a... Uh, a messaging system, and um, has uh, obviously is very active. Um, <clears throat> whether it's interesting, Zoom actually did not report skyrocketing earnings. It's reported skyrocketing unearnings because it had it had a free service. Slack must have been a little more careful about how they made their offerings, so people weren't allowed to do them for free. Um, and um, Slack is well known, and m many of my colleagues strongly favor Slack. Here we have GrowWork, which is um, basically a home office um, company, which is also pretty interesting. You can rent a home desk or a chair or supplies. And um, has a tenfold surge in customers. That's not too surprising. This is a good business. They chose the right business. All right, we've here some back to vaccines. We know a few are being tested already, and we're not so certain. I mean, this treatment time is historically short, and I think that's partly because of the computer, the model for actually testing on the Initial um, scans on the on the, with computers is much better developed now than it used to be, and here we have this 12 to 18 month number, and everybody is obviously involved. And this particular article didn't didn't do anything terribly exciting. It has some rather, in my opinion, not rather uh, difficult to believe. Uh, timelines, not because they did a bad job, because I think nobody really knows what's going on. It will all depend how well these vaccines perform, either in terms of their safety, or more probably more importantly, just whether they stop the virus. Um, and here we have a slightly cautious report that you should read. I noticed this just in general, this particular report. And um, it just says that AI is still at the beginning, which is obvious. And as we'll see later on, we can have AI research involved in the diagnosis, the treatment, and also the study of the spread. We will go through these different classes of AI later on. But I actually haven't studied this particular uh, report in detail, 
but it's a good one if you're writing, doing a project, this is a good one to put on your reading list. All right, here we have the last two part of this uh, session is telehealth. Um, and uh, there is just a White House announcement about increasing access to digital health resources, which is effectively telling them to people to use telehealth more often. And so this is now the US president endorsing this particular idea. It comes from OSTP, which is an important office in the government. And um, this is, these are just comments from the, um, the uh, various companies, the telehealth industry consortium and Amazon Web Services, which is of course supporting, supporting with a Providing internet resources for advertising, what's available, and things like that. And I guess I guess this is actually explained on the government website. But I think it's interesting that telehealth has has got a strong endorsement for the government. So that's the end of uh, this a quick overview of different approaches to um, uh, to attacking the virus. So thank, and now we'll come back to, uh, in the next few sections into a couple of sections into the study of the actual detailed responses, which I'm familiar with. Thank you very much.